Last night I had these very powerful thoughts um, which helped me to center in a bit. To center? Yeah, yeah. to center. Okay. And um, it's all this monkey business that happens up here and feeling so outside and this and that. I didn't come here for that. And You didn't come here for a what? I didn't come here for this. For the for this monkey business. Oh the monkey business is here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Can you live in harmony even when the monkey business is there? The monkey won't go away. Who is supporting the monkey? What's the monkey food? The, the attention, Guruji. Attention, the attention. Whose attention? Slow down, because I really intend that you get it. Whose attention? The food for them. If the monkey doesn't get the food, the monkey cannot live with you. It's fair enough. If the monkey doesn't get the food, the monkey cannot stay around. He's going to go to some place where he gets the food. So if the monkey is getting the food, what is the food and where he gets it from? You can take a moment. We're not in a hurry. Because each of these kind of um, invitation to look, they must be able to bear Power food, no. So the monkey food is being fed by the monkey mind also. You may say monkey mind uh, and monkey food may be the same thing. But the one who is disturbed by the monkey mind is the monkey friend. You are not this monkey friend. You are not the monkey or the monkey friend. But we have a very strong tendency to identify as the monkey friend or the monkey victim. And that victim is personal identity. Personal identity. It is a form of the mind in the shape of personal identity, the I. The term I really indicate consciousness. When you say I, it means I or I am, I consciousness am. That's what it really means. But it's been hijacked a little bit to become a person. The belief, I am this body and my conditioning, and the one who says, yes, I'm going to Casa Nirvana, I'm going away next week, and I like this, I don't like that, I had a good satsang. This I and goes largely unquestioned. And that is the main monkey food. Can anybody recognize through what we're sharing that uh, no monkey food, no monkey? Some years ago in London, very famous place, Trafalgar Square. It was very, very famous tourist place. And one of the things it was famous for was thousands of pigeons was coming there. And uh, somebody was making uh, business out of it also. The tourists had, they had made millions of postcards with pigeons in Trafalgar Square. So people were actually uh, coming and photographers. In those days, Polaroid cameras, they, they were selling corn, box of corn, maybe one or two euro. So you, the pigeons would come eat the corn and then you can have, you know, heat the corn put some on your hair, pigeon sit on your head, take a picture, send it home. I've been to London. <laughs> it was like that. I've been to London, and all I got there is monkey shit on my hair, whatever it is. <laughs> it was like that. I just want to say, the mayor of London at that time decided that, OK, we want to keep up with other European cities. So there's a hygiene problem posed by all the pigeons. So they made a law that as from a certain day, 
No one is to feed pigeons anymore. Nobody should. It's illegal to feed a pigeon. You can be arrested for feeding the pigeons, but you must not harm them. Don't harm them. Just don't feed them. Okay? So that law came about. I was in London at the time. Two weeks after this law came into effect, there was no pigeons in Trafalgar Square. They were showing up in my town in Brixton <laughs> and other places around, but no pigeons there. Maybe two or three looking around, going, well, what's up? I don't know what they were doing, but no pigeons were going there. Why? And you, you get my point? They were not getting food. You didn't have to kill them. You didn't have to shout at them or chase them. By themselves, they left. And that analogy or example is good for us also. This monkey mind you speak about that no one can control. Maybe some people say practice some pranayama, just you know, and then you know watch the breathing and so on. And the for a while. Stop pranayama, monkey back in the tree. It's like that. How to stop monkey mind? And I show you a simple way that you continue just observing. When you observe anything, if you observe the mind with detachment, without logging into its energy, if you observe anything, it automatically slows down. If you don't get involved, it slows down. Try it today also. Just by being aware of it, not fighting, not judging, being aware, but being aware of being aware, not identifying. Can anybody follow this? Yes. And watch what happened. This claustrophobia somehow magically just drifts away like a cloud, recede, and is replaced by a sense of presence. This sense of presence is not personal, and it definitely is not monkey food. It is the presence, it's the God presence, it's conscious presence, it's universal consciousness that reveals itself. When we are engaged through personhood, the noise comes with it, and it's like, oh, I can't bear it's too much. Sometimes we enjoy all the noise. Then it becomes too much, and then we want to stop, can't stop it. You see, it's time to sit and just observe, let go of everything, be aware. If you put your attention on awareness, everything that's flitting around in the mind begins to slow down. It's the law of life, it happened like that. And you come back to a natural awareness. And all the things that seem to be going wrong, you see, they belong to the mind stuff. If you don't do this, you're just chasing clouds, trying to find clouds away. More coming up behind you, it's like that. So it is good that the monkey mind doesn't go by shouting at it. You have to observe the sh the the monkey mind and the one who is fighting against monkey mind, they're like two sides of one coin. All the troubles and the one who is troubled are witnessable. The thing is that when we identify as the person who is troubled, you stop seeing that the person can be seen. Is that clear enough? So that is the way, and you will experience the result of this, not next week. and Yes, it could be, but today you can sit. It's a simple exercise. And it works. There's no one it does not work for. This advice if anyone is open, I could give this to an emperor, I could give it to a beggar, I could give it to a thief, I could give it to a doctor, I could give it to a dying person. 
I could give it to someone who is suffering from a mental disorder. If they can follow it, it works. And that's why I say it is a in a universal finding. It's not merely a religion that works in this religion, not for that. No. Beyond that, you could be an atheist also. You follow, it works. So, and it is simple. My question is, then why is it not made use of? Why? Guruji, hmm? in the fear, is there anything you see? Huh? Is there anything you see in the way? If there's anything I see in the way, the, yeah. is lack of application. And I wondered about it. I wondered about it. Why is this happening? And I see, actually, that we have a strong investment in the sickness. We, you don't like to hear that? We have an investment in the sickness, in the identity that has a lot of projections that it wants to fulfill. It has a lot of relationship. I was speaking earlier, using example. Suppose you buy a house, or let's start with a car. You buy a car, and it takes a lot of care. Also, you have to have security for it, to put petrol for it. You have to fix it when it goes wrong. You have to make sure that it's not going to be stolen or it's going to be vandalized. There's a lot of concern. And the car is insentient. The car doesn't know it belongs to you. If somebody's going to steal a car, the car is going, hey, somebody's stealing my car. <laughs> it is insentient. And look how much care goes into protecting this car. Okay? That's one. Step two. Step two. You own this house. This house needs a lot of care also. What food you eat, sickness, all different things you have to take care of this body. Also, you have to wash and brush the teeth every day. Most of us do that. <laughs> okay? It takes upkeep as well. Not only that, the tenant in the house has a lot of psychological problem. Possession, uh, judgment, fear, anxiety, projections, memory, memory of bad things happening in the past, worry about bad things happening in the future, in this house, plus the car, <laughs> plus the children, plus the partner, plus the government, okay, plus the pollution, plus the how much you have to care for as a person. And yet all of this is governed by universal consciousness, which you are also, but you are not switched on to your universal consciousness. You want to live as a person and look at me, I'm doing well, and I've got more money than you. We love this game, love, hate it. This is like this. It's like a love affair with a paparazzi. When you're feeling down, they come to take you. Oh, no. <laughs> when it's too much, oh, go away. I want to see you. This is our life is like that. It's beautiful. You know why? Because you can't bear it for too long. And then it forces you to be searching for something. There must be something much more easy than this, better way than this. I wonder how you all came here. They're searching for something. Because this guy is uncontrollable. You want to switch him off? Try. Switch him off. So I show you something. Begin to observe with detachment and see what happens. A complete change of paradigm. I don't even want to call the beingness a paradigm. And you are free to question it, 
but to try it and look. See if anyone is smart enough to escape their mind by their own techniques. Universal Consciousness, Supreme Lord of the Universe, show you a way also. Show us a way also. This, you, even when we pray to God, often is on behalf of our ego. Some people say, may thy will be done. But really, secretly, may my will be done with your support. That's what we are doing. The only prayer I feel that works, praying with God, is to say, rid me of this ego and absorb me in you. That works. Or learn to observe with detachment. When you observe with detachment, the ego and all its world is like it, it just floats away. It's, it's not fantasy, it's not imagination, it's not visualization. Sober, sober introspection. And what is left here is the field of being. And the field of being is the presence of the Lord in you.